There are countless rewrites of standard Unix utils, and many of the new ones are being done in Rust because Rust is just the cool new language that everyone learns. But today, we're looking at something that's not actually a rewrite. I thought it was when I was first told about it. It turns out it's actually just a wrapper. Today, we are looking at Pretty Ping, which basically takes Ping and makes the output considerably more user friendly. Ping is an amazing application if what you want to do is have the output be machine parsable. So as we can see, tokenizing the section that's actually important is incredibly easy. But because parsing this is very easy, it also has a lot of extra wasted space that doesn't really need to be here if all you're trying to do is read it as a user. So let's just go and stop that and instead run it as pretty ping. As we can see, this is much, much cleaner. The first thing we see is this key along the top. This can be disabled if we don't actually need to see it. Basically what this is, is explaining what's going on in the graph. Rather than just outputting the raw milliseconds, it gives you a visual representation of how bad the ping actually is. Because we're pinging the Google servers though, the ping actually is quite good. This would be in the range of 30 to 40 milliseconds. Let's instead go ping a different server. Let's go and ping, say, Luke Smith's website, and that should be considerably worse. And give it a second. Okay, that... <laughs> so that is it. So that is in the range of above 230 milliseconds up to infinite. As we can see, it's currently 250. It does also show you the number of packets sent, as well as the number of packets actually lost. So in this case, we've lost zero packets over the 54 that we've actually sent. This gives us a 0% loss rate. Next to that, we have the minimum ping, the average ping, and then the maximum ping. So in this case, the maximum ping we've seen is 255, and then after that is the ping of the last packet. Now, assuming you don't go and change your zoom while the application actually is running, when it gets to the edge of the screen, it actually should wrap around. Now, I've noticed in some cases, the wrapping is going to be a little bit off. Hopefully this time, it gives a good demonstration of how it's supposed to work. But if it doesn't work, that's also a good demonstration as well. So it's gonna push it down a few lines, and then it's gonna start working again. I'm not sure why that actually happens. I think that's just a bug in the way that terminals actually render stuff. The one thing that it doesn't change from the regular version of ping is what it shows once ping is actually done running. So this breakdown of basically the entire ping session is exactly the same. If we go and run that in the regular version of ping, so Luke Smith's website again, just because we're going to be consistent, and then we go and quit out of this straight away, as we can see, nothing has changed. Now, because this is just a wrapper around ping, anything that isn't handled directly by pretty ping is going to be passed directly to the base application. So that allows you to make use of basically every option that exists in the regular version of ping, with the exception of the dash F option, the dash Q option, and the dash capital R option. And if you try to actually use any of those options, it will give you a warning about them. So it's not something that's just going to sneak up on you out of nowhere. If you try to run that, it will tell you that. I don't like that it does that. I would prefer if, say, one of those options were used. It just ran the base version of ping instead. Maybe still give you a warning, but still let it actually run. Every modern terminal supports Unicode, and that's what's being used for the key up here, as well as rendering the graph. But let's just say you don't like the Unicode output, or for whatever reason, need to show it in a terminal that only supports ASCII. What you can go and do is include the dash dash no Unicode option, and that's going to go and do that. Let's go and use the exact same website again, and this won't show all of the same options we saw before. So as we can see, the key is half as big, but it does a perfectly fine job at getting the point across. There is also going to be a no multicolor option. Keep in mind it is the US spelling, and this is going to make it so everything is using the exact same colored output. This will also go and modify the key again. This time it stops at 175, and then after that, it goes to infinite. Or we could just straight up go and disable the color altogether by using the no color option, and that is just going to be a plain white output. This probably isn't something you're ever going to need to do, but if you just don't like the color being there, it's nice to have. 
And if you don't care about the key or the legend, whatever you want to call it, you can use the no legend option and that will go and run it with the graph still being there, but not showing what the data actually means. I would like the option to just go and disable the graph as well, but I don't believe you can actually do that. Most of the other options in here aren't that exciting. Things like last, columns, lines, RTT min, and RTT max are just for modifying how the output actually looks. Now, orc bin and ping bin might actually be incredibly useful. So this application makes use of orc to basically take the output from the ping application and then format it how it actually needs to be formatted. You might not be using a standard implementation of orc though. You might be using GNU Orc or Mork or Nork or something else out there and the path that it has for where Orc is actually located might not be the path that you're actually using. Same with ping. You might be using the IP utils version, you might be using the Mac version, maybe you've installed some other version of the application that's not actually called ping that you want to use instead. Any of the standard implementations of Orc and ping should work perfectly fine. If you're using something weird though that completely changes the base specification, don't expect that to actually work. Occasionally people ask me about my LS. So when I run LS, it's not actually running the LS application that most of you probably have installed on your system. It's actually running an application known as EXA. So let's go and do the exact same thing to ping, but this time with pretty ping. Basically all I did with my LS command is made an alias in my shell. So if you're using bash, you're going to use your bash RC. If you're using ZSH, you're going to use your ZSHRC. If you're using something else, I don't know, work that one out for yourself. Work out how to make an alias. So I'm using ZSH, so I'm going to use my ZSHRC. Mine's going to be located in a weird location, but it is still going to be the ZSHRC. And then we can just go and do an alias ping equals pretty ping. And then if we go and restart our shell, basically that should just work as if ping is really pretty ping. So ping Luke smith.xyz and as we can see it's just running pretty ping now you might be wondering how is this actually working because pretty ping is a wrapper around ping and now the ping command is just calling pretty ping isn't that just like a circular call well in the case of aliases aliases are only used inside of the user shell so if I wanted to go use ls or ping in a script, because they're not actually being loaded inside of that environment, the applications will be the base version of the application, which is incredibly useful in the case of pretty ping, because pretty ping is just a bash script. I believe it's available in the standard repos on Arch Linux, but because it's just a bash script, download it from the GitHub, make it executable, and then you're good to go. Something else that simple is setting up a server over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Even though this application was last updated functionally about four years ago, yeah, there was a change to the readme nine months ago, but like four years ago for an actual feature. It doesn't really need to change. It's not like ping is changing all of a sudden. It's got everything that it needs to actually have, with the exception of that one problem I mentioned where it just refuses to run certain options. Besides that, it does everything it could ever need to do. So if you want a better looking version of ping, minus the questionable sort of implementation you might get from a complete rewrite, this is absolutely worth checking out. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Carl, Mitchell, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Peter D, Stephen, Tease, through Tony Dushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave, repay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. This channel is available over on Odyssey, and I have a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I upload live streams, where I, I stream 
twice a week, and also upload YouTube shorts that are clipped out from those actual streams. That'll be everything for me, and I'm out.